What's going on YouTube, United Gamer 101 here, welcome back to another Dark Souls 3 video, and this time I'm going to be starting a brand new series with you guys, and that is all weapon locations in this game. Each episode I'm going to focus on a different category, like for instance this one is katanas, and the next one could be axes, curved great swords, curved swords, or anything. In each of these episodes I'm going to be going in detail on the weapon location, showcasing the weapon, what each weapon needs to be upgraded, if the weapon can be infused or buffed, the stats of the weapon, the weapon arts of the weapon, and pretty much any major detail you can think of each weapon. I also will be giving my own recommendation on the weapon of that category that I like best for what reasons. That being said, be sure to let me know in the comment section below on which weapon category I should be doing next. There will also be a link in the description below to a whole separate playlist of all the weapon locations in the categories. Also if you find these guides helpful, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with it guys. First off, the first katana you can get in the entire game is the Uchi Katana located in the Fire Link Shrine. Now before showing off the weapon location, we're going to be going over the moveset of the weapon, the weapon arts and stats and whatever. Even though the Uchi Katana is the first acquired katana in the game, that does not mean by any means that it is the weakest katana in this game. The Uchi Katana is upgraded with Titanite shards and can be infused with gems and as well as buffed. This is one of my favorite katanas in the game because I like doing katanas with faith builds, so like a faith dex build. And if you infuse this with a lightning gem, it gets an A scaling in faith. Although it only starts with a D scaling in dexterity, it goes all the way up to C, and if you use a sharp gem, you can get it up to a B scaling in dexterity. As for the weapon art, it is the default hold weapon art that is with most katanas that allows you to do a quick swipe as well as parry with R2. A really, really good weapon art in this game for PvP and PvE. The stats on it, as you can tell, I have used this, got it all the way up to plus 9 because, like I said, I really do like this katana. Its base stats are only 115 with an E skilling in strength and a D skilling in dexterity. All in all, it is a very good weapon and a very good choice as a katana. As I said, it is acquired in Firelink Shrine coming from the left. Instead of going in the Firelink Shrine, you want to come over to this side and you will see a Katana dude. Kill him and he will drop the Uji Katana. Now, I know a much higher level in the game. That's because I was running a strength build, so I didn't need this. So you can actually get this as soon as you start the game and get over here after defeating Gundyr. Just come over to the left. He's going to be a lot more difficult than he was for me. Just my L2 could solo one-shot him, so be careful. He's no pushover. Next up is the Mound Maker's Covenant Bloodlust weapon. This katana is acquired by receiving the second rank of the Mound Maker's Covenant. This is one of the more unique katanas in this game. Although it cannot actually be buffed by spells or miracles or such, or actually be infused, its L2 move actually buffs the weapon. Since this is a special weapon, it is required to have Twinkling Titanite, which is more rare in the game to upgrade this weapon. That being said, it also only has to go to plus 5. All in all, it is a very cool katana, actually probably one of my other favorites because of its specialty and its uniqueness. I really have seen it being used in PvP, and someone actually destroyed me with it today, so it is a pretty cool weapon. There is you an example of its buff, it stabs itself, which you do lose some HP, so if you're doing a no healing PvP, you do start off at a disadvantage, but the weapon does get buffed from it. The startup stats may not seem too great, but it'll end up doing 184 damage as well as having an A scaling dexterity. Now like I said, it can't be infused, but that's not too much of a problem if you're doing a pure dex build and going to have a high dex stat, it's definitely a good katana to check out. All in all, it is one of the better katanas in this game, so I definitely recommend you check it out. As as I said, it is a Mound Makers reward. Now, if you don't know how to join the Mound Makers, I have a guide for it on my channel. But once you join the Mound Makers, you can lay your summon signs down and be summoned as a Mad Phantom. My recommendation is laying down a red invasion sign rather than a white soapstone sign because the worldly enemies will not attack you if you do a red invasion sign. But after collecting 10 shackles, return back to the Mound Makers Covenant base, which is an undead settlement. Go at the altar and submit those 10 shackles, and you will get Bloodlust.
Next up is the Katana Dark Drift, which is received from Yuria of Londor. Now, if you don't know how to unlock or have Yuria of Londor appear in Firelink Shrine, I do have a guide for that on my channel. This is also one of the more unique katanas because the weapon is almost invisible. Yet again, since it is like a special weapon, it requires Twinkling Titanite to upgrade it, but it does yet again go only to plus five. I recommend using this katana if you're not doing a pure dex build because it doesn't scale with dex that well. It only goes to a C scaling, even fully upgraded, but the base damage goes up to like 226 so that is very good so if you're doing like a pyro dex build faith dex build uh, sorcery dex build it's a pretty good katana to use the weapon art of this katana stabs forward and then lunges and apparently stabs through shields now I've tested this on enemies and it hasn't done too much damage so I don't really know how that works too well um, it didn't seem too well to me uh, you guys can test that out on your own. And as for this katana, it's not one that I personally use because it doesn't scale that well with dex or anything, and you can't infuse it to scale as you like. And although you can't infuse it, you can buff it, which is pretty cool, so you can still use like Karthus Flame Arc and Lightning Blade on it. So that is pretty good, though. There's either two ways to get this katana. You can either kill Yuria like I'm going to do, or you can follow her quest line which involves Andrea and whatnot and getting the third secret ending. Either way, you will get the Dark Drift. Next up is the Black Blade Katana located in the Smoldering Lake in a Mimic Chest. There isn't really much to say about this katana, it's pretty basic when it comes to katana, kind of like the Uchi Katana. Uh, it has the same move sets as it, a little twist on some of the moves, uh, but the weapon art is the exact same, which is the hold weapon art. This katana upgrades with Titanite Shards all the way up to plus 10, which does 244 damage, and it only starts off with a descaling in strength and a descaling in dexterity. And the sad thing, fully upgraded, it only ends up with a C scaling in dexterity, and that's kind of unfortunate. It is kind of like the Uchi Katana on the way it upgrades, it will end up with a B scaling if you put a sharp gem on it and it will do a little bit more damage than the Uchi Katana. But if you're like me and you like doing like a faith build alongside your dex build, it does not do that well if you infuse it with a lightning gem, it only has a C scaling in faith. Yet again, there aren't really any bad katanas in this game, they're kind of overpowered in some sorts on the stabbing that you can do in PvP. Um, if you are not going to have too high of a dexterity and you want a good base damage, I would recommend this over the Uchi Katana. But if you're doing like a faith and dex build, then I definitely recommend you get the Uchi Katana and infuse it with a lightning gem. This weapon can be infused as well as buffed, so all these pretty much just come down to your personal preference on the build that you are trying to make. That's the good thing about Dark Souls is there's so many things you can do. Inside the Catacombs of Karthus, coming from the boss room of the High Lord Walner, we're going to go over to Smoldering Lake. Just in case you guys have never been to Smoldering Lake, it is kind of a hidden area. What you want to do is the bridge that you cross to get to the boss fight, you want to hit that and it's going to break down and open this area. Now be careful coming down here because the mimic chest that we're looking for is directly beside a fire demon that is much more difficult than the one that we fought with Siegfried of Katarina back in the Undead Settlement. So be careful coming down here and in my case the actual fire demon killed it for me. Um, so make sure you have a good bit of health if you're going to do that like me. But come over here to the left. You can kill the fire demon if, if you want to first and then come back up here. But this is the mimic chest you want to kill and it will drop your katana. Next up is the good old classic washing pole, the giant long, long katana. This one is very, very, very similar to the Uchi Katana, but longer. With its scaling, its damage, it's just slightly a little bit better than the Uchi Katana. That's a little bit more damage. Not a big noticeable difference, but it is a little bit. Just like the Uchi Katana, this weapon can be infused and buffed, and it's upgraded with Titanite Shards. At the end of its 10 upgrades, it will do 252 damage, and will have a C scaling in dexterity and a D scaling in strength. Last Lastly, just like the Uchi Katana, it's scaling whenever you infuse it with like a lightning gem or a crystal gem, it does an A scaling in faith and intelligence. So it's definitely a good weapon if you're trying to do a faith uh, dex build or like an intelligence faith build. And yet again, it does have the default weapon art for katanas, which is hold where you lunge forward or parry. 
Like I said, it's really like the Uchi Katana when it comes to stats, and so I recommend, I guess, going with this one if you're going for, like, a Faith dex build or something. Now, the info on it says it, like, breaks easy. I don't know if it has to do with the durability or if that's just the lore behind this order. I'm not really sure on that, but uh, it really is a good Katana. This is actually located in the Firelink Shrine from the Handmaid, and you're going to have to give her the Easterner Ashes. Now, to get that, we're going to come from the Pontiff Bonfire after the Irithyll the Burial Valley. This is on your way to a Norlando. Follow this route I take, and it will give you the Easterner Ashes. Now, I've already picked these up because I did an Eastern Armor Guide, um, so they're not actually going to be there. You're not going to see me pick them up, but I swear to you, they are going to be there. Running up these slopes, you're going to avoid the archers, and you're going to roll off the side right here, and on that body, you will have the ashes. Return to Firelink Shrine, give her the ashes, and you will be able to buy the washing pole. Ah, how many? Ashen one. Next up is the dual katanas that are in this game. Now, I love using these things just because they are so much fun and so freaking cool. Now, please, please, please bear with me because I'm probably going to butcher this name, but this is the Onikiri and the Ubadaki dual katanas. Yeah, I probably butchered that really bad. But anyways, I absolutely love using these weapons. If you're looking for a fun time, these weapons are so awesome and they look so cool. They are upgraded with Titanite shards. Uh, they can be buffed as well as infused. Now here's the really cool thing about these. Now this is why I like and recommend these and I can't wait to make a build about it. If you infuse this with a lightning gem or a crystal gem, it has an S scaling in intelligence or faith depending on which one you use. Now that being said, it only has 98 damage, so make sure you're going to have like 40 to 50 faith or intelligence if you're doing one of those builds. As for the weapon art, you can see it right there. You take this big lunge forward and you can actually stutter enemies to make it a good hit. It doesn't do a ton of ton of damage, but if you're going for a quick hit in like PvP or PvE, it is pretty efficient. Now if you're upgrading these normally they will only have a c scaling in strength and dexterity you can actually get an a scaling in strength which is pretty unique for like a katana and you can get a b scaling if you do a sharp gem but all in all they are both very fun cool great katanas but they are located way later in the game in the grand archives right before honestly the second to last boss before going over to that passageway and going to the boss fight, you're going to come across these three NPCs. Now, I went ahead and killed two of them. There's a mage and like a guy with an axe, but this last guy is who drops these katanas. Kill him and he will drop the katanas. Last but surely not least is the Chaos Blade Katana, one of the more unique ones that is upgraded with Twinkling Titanite to plus 5. Considerably one of the best dex weapons in the game because of its scaling and its base attack, it is a great katana to check out. Now since its scaling does go to S for dexterity, this is only really going to be used if you're doing like a pure dex build or at least getting your dexterity to 40 or 50. And that being said, its only attack is 180 when fully upgraded, but if you have a high, high dexterity, it is really good. The downside of this, since it is like one of the special weapons, and because of its scaling, you cannot infuse it, and you cannot buff it. Other than that, its weapon art and its moveset is like the other katanas, and it's found way later in the game, probably even after the Grand Archives, depending on what route you're taking. Um, it's kind of hidden in the untended graves. But if you are doing a high dex character, I recommend you get this katana.
After the boss fight, Osirius, the consumed king, you're going to come back here. Now, if you've beat him, you've came back here before, this is where you get Path of the Dragon and go to Arch Dragon Peak. There's actually a hidden area. There's an illusionary wall behind the chest back here. Now, I'm not going to walk you through the entire Untended Graze. I'm going to let you guys play through that your own way. Just in case you didn't know how to get to this place, you come behind here, hit the illusionary wall, and it will be here. After defeating the boss fight Gundir, which is the first boss you fought in the entire game, but obviously much more difficult now, you're going to come back here, and it's going to be like Firelink Shrine. You're going to come over to where the Uchikitana guy was. Luckily, this time you don't have to fight anybody, and your Chaos Blade will be on the ground. And I can't really wait to see what this has to do with the lore and stuff. The game's only been out for a week or so, so I'm really looking forward to reading about that. But come back to the left and run past the enemies. You can pretty much get out of here and then use like a Homeward Bone back or something. And you will get your Chaos Blade, which is the last katana in this game. Thank you guys so much for watching, if you found this guide helpful be sure to give the video a thumbs up and comment below what I should do next, should it be axes, curved great swords, curved swords, it could be anything. If you do have any questions comment below or tweet me at unitedgamer101 and also subscribe if you are new to the channel and look for more Dark Souls 3 content on my channel. I also am making a whole separate playlist of all weapon locations so that will be in the link in the description below as well. And when it really comes down to it there's not really any wrong katana that you can choose, there's not really any that just completely suck. Um, but my recommendation, and at least this is my opinion, so obviously you guys can disagree, but if you're doing a full-on dex build, I recommend the Chaos Blade because it scales S automatically. Um, but if you're trying to do like a Faith in dex build or like an Intelligence in dex build, I either recommend like the Washing Pole or the Dual Katanas. The Dual Katanas because they have an S scaling, so that'd be pretty cool. It's really fun to use too. I mean, you can't use a shield really, but it's worth the risk and it's really fun. So, but if you're going for that kind of build, I recommend those. But thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in another Dark Souls 3 video.